Well, we are excited about this next segment. You loved him as an anchor here at 3TV. For about five years, Brandon Lee anchored our evening newscast before leaving the news business, at least for now, late last year. His latest project has him opening up about his past and the demons he's fought to overcome. We knew he was a talented artist. Now we know he's an author. His memoir, Mascara Boy, tells the story of Brandon's life off camera and how he battled through the dark times to live the life he wants today. Brandon, joining us this morning, sitting down with Scott to talk about his book. Uh, Olivia, thank you. Who is that handsome man there in those pictures? I was like, whew, easy there, Blue Steel. Like, <laughs> you know, what happened? I need to do some new pictures taken. <laughs> well, people always ask, where did Brandon go? So you moved west to work on all these uh, podcasts and your book and everything, so you're doing great, so it's glad uh, we're glad to see that, obviously. Thank you. It's always good to see you, my friend. It's thank good you. to be back thank at Arizona's you. family. Some of the, the best times of my career happened right here well, in this building. Uh, glad to hear that. Yeah. So you wrote this book, Mascara Boy. Yeah. It's about your addiction to sex and drugs which I think started at the age of 15 you were saying and I was shocked reading this how open you were I mean obviously you right. want to be honest when you write a book but right. why go there you know it's funny my therapist uh, said the same thing when she found out that I wanted to write a book and share a message of hope out there there's so many people who are who are suffering in their silence. Uh, mm -hmm. They feel hopeless and helpless right now uh, because there is a legitimate stigma that exists when you know people find out you're a drug addict or a sex addict or even if you're in recovery, there's mm -hmm. still a stigma that exists out there. But my therapist asked me that same question. She goes, how much are you gonna tell? And I said, everything. You told it all. And she looked at me and she goes, you're ready. You yeah. know, and, and it, it is a little nerve wracking now that people are starting to get the book this week mm -hmm. um, and people are starting to read it. Uh, there is a legitimate, I have some, you know, fear um, about when people find out everything. Um, but at the same time, the purpose that I wrote this book is to help that person right. out there. Yeah. Who, if I, if I speak out loud what I went through, then right. maybe they can say, well, if he's speaking out about it, then maybe right. I'll feel safe to say something to somebody. And you said that everyone's been real supportive so far. You know, so far, it's just, I, it's been incredible. And especially the viewers here in Arizona have been so supportive of me throughout this entire process. And the feedback has been nothing but positive so far. So you've been clean for uh, a decade now. And you, when you think about, or when you were writing this book, did you think, how in the heck was I into that? I know. It's, you know, that's the question I get asked all the time, right? I grew up in Orange County, some of the most beautiful beaches. You're there in Newport Beach, too. And uh, people ask me, how did you find drugs at such a young age? And I needed to know the answer to that question. My parents weren't drug addicts. My parents weren't alcoholics. So what happened to me? And it wasn't until I went into intense therapy that I realized that being uh, sexually abused repeatedly every Friday uh, by my piano teacher and sexually abused by my youth soccer coach that that trauma went untreated for so many years that at age 15 when I was presented cocaine I did it and that feeling that I got from cocaine numbed all that pain okay and not only that is I was dealing with gay shame too you know that was back in the 80s and 90s right and it was not okay to be gay back then you cannot be out and especially in conservative right. Orange County and right. so to be able to escape felt good. And so I kept chasing that feeling good because I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. Well, good for you on writing this thing. Where do you go from now? Where do I go from now? So the purpose of me writing this book was to go on the motivational speaking circuit. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my whole purpose in life is to spread a message of hope uh, with addiction that I know so many people with the opioid crisis that's happening here. As a matter of fact, it was the opioid crisis that I did the documentary on while I was reporting right, here. Right. And I saw all of these viewers call these people trash and scum. Yeah. And I stepped away and I said, Brandon, you, you've got to put a face to this. These people have to understand that addiction does not discriminate. There are lawyers, doctors, pharmaceutical reps that are addicted. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to know the guy you tune into on the nightly news used to be that guy. Yeah. Well, we're so happy. You're doing great. We Thank love you. you here, of course. Love you too. And an amazing artist. Thank you. So uh, we have three pieces or four, four in our house. You do. In our I house, mean, he's so. got Thank like you. a museum, a Brandon Lee Museum <laughs> and a gallery. I look at you every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you. Uh, good Thank luck you. with the book and uh, good luck with everything that comes your way. I know Thank it's going to be all good stuff. I appreciate yeah, that. You're Thank awesome. Thank you very much, yeah. my friend. Thank you.